Hola, ¿cómo están? How are you doing, Mary Familia? I hope you're doing good today. And I'm back with another video. So the topic I want us to talk a little bit more about today is uh, on the topic of the INFJ uh, personality type and the stereotype that we have when it comes to being alone and being by ourselves and actually having a preference for being alone and being by ourselves. I think that there's enough content out there when it comes to um, why, right? Um, and that's content that I, I have input on too. So what my goal is to, of course, make videos pertaining to that aspect as well. But I think that there's a lot of content already out there as to why INFJs, for example, don't have any friends, right? So a lot of the information that you'll find out there says that, you know, say that one of the reasons INFJs don't have any friends is because essentially they're scared to get hurt, right? They're, I mean, let's face it, human nature is such that it's people have this tendency of not being able to put others before themselves um, in a very effective way. And so they, they have this tendency of being selfish, right? And even more in today's society, I, I think that we're not really doing a good job of explaining to people that yes, you want to put yourself first, but not in a selfish way. You want to put yourself first more in a self-care way, but you don't want to be selfish. You want to be able and have the ability to put others before yourself as well. So you, you really need both skill sets. <laughs> and apart from needing both skill sets, you need to know and be able to identify which skill set is necessary at any point in time. So it actually goes further beyond just putting yourself first. And I think for INFJs, what happens is because a lot of our experiences most of the time are based off of such painful experiences and things that people have done to us, and we are already more prone to be more sensitive than maybe the average person because we feel more, uh, we just really feel more intensely and we have higher expectations for ourselves and for others. So it hurts that much more when we're disappointed or when we're hurt. And so I think what ends up happening when it comes to the isolation, much like you'll find in from other data sources is uh, the INFJs tend to stay away and spend a lot of time by themselves. But there's also the aspect that INFJs honestly just enjoy being by themselves more because um, they're introverts. And so they get their energy from spending time with themselves and by themselves. And spending time with other people literally depletes their energy, like in the most literal sense possible, you know, they might spend, at least for myself, I might spend maybe two to three hours around people and I'm exhausted. It used to be really, really bad. I've been able to train myself to where I can spend like a good chunk of time around people if it's not too big of a group. Let's say that we're talking about a group of, maybe it starts as a bigger group because what, what has happened is I've forced myself to go to group events and things because I recognize this as both a strength, but I also kind of recognize it as a weakness as well um, because humans are social creatures. So although due to my personality type, I'm able to go a really, really long time without human interaction. I hate to say it like that, but yeah, without human interaction, I'm literally able to go months without needing that. Um, there does, there inevitably does come a point where I need it. And I, if I don't get it, I will get depressed and it will feel instant, but it's actually not instant. It's the accumulation of not having been uh, interacting with other people for an extended period of time. So um, 
I know in my case, I've had to work really, really hard once I realized that about my personality type and about myself um, at a younger age. Because when I first moved out, I was so happy I was living with myself. I was so happy I was going to get so much time to myself. And I got a chunk of it. And I noticed very quickly my mood, seemingly out of nowhere, declined quite rapidly. And I was like, I need to talk to people. Right. So I would, I would get lonely more often, or I would feel sad more often than, than uh, the norm. Right. Or than what's healthy. And I just noticed those things. And I was like, uh, uh, okay, it, it's not realistic for me to be with myself the whole time, at least not for me. Right. Forever. So the thing is humans are social creatures and they're, me they're meant to and made to interact with each other. And you need that, even as an INFJ, that is something that you need to be a, a healthy individual. So what I've done is I force myself, I continue to do it. I continue to force myself to go to groups, find events that I enjoy, socialize, be a part of things. Um, I don't do it as frequently as other personalities might, but I try to do it at least maybe once a month or twice a month, I'll try to go out. Sometimes I go to two months. Uh, if I get busy enough, I, I might go two to three months without <laughs> without going go doing any of those things. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I need to uh, go out, do this. So at first it was really, really hard because I had to, what goes into doing something like this for an INFJ is, is it's way more work for us because the way that we view things is like, we like to plan things out. So with something that is, is not a strength for us, now we got to figure out, okay, where do we even start, right? Like, so for me, it was super hard when I first started because I didn't even know where to start. I didn't even know like where, literally how, where do I find these events? What events, like, you know, so, uh, but because of my job and because I, as a, as, as a job, I get to talk to people for a living. I'm a counselor. I frequently get new ideas that my clients don't even know they're giving me ideas, <laughs> but they're always giving me new ideas. And like, I'll wake up randomly with this new idea. And so I was able to, at this point, I've been able to put together a structure for myself where I know exactly where to go. I know events that where to find different events and things like that. And where to make sure that I am getting social human interaction on a somewhat regular basis, not often, but enough. Right. Um, so it's pretty nice to be at the point where I'm at now. I'm still continuing to build it because my energy again, gets sucked out of me, but because I did that, right? And I continue to do that. I'm able to last longer and longer in social settings. That's what I'm finding is that initially when I was younger, I would literally two to three hours. I used to work in corporate and if they would have an event outside of work and stuff like that, like two to three hours was my max. Like I would go two to three hours and I would get so drained it was a struggle, right? Um, so now I've noticed that I can actually go longer. Um, and I think it's because I have the system set up for myself where I'm getting enough time in between to recover. And so I have, it's like charging up your phone, right? So I'm going in with a hundred percent battery. <laughs> So I'm able to last longer. And then also I've been practicing doing this. So I'm getting better at it. Um, and so it's not requiring as much energy, right? So I think that when it comes to isolation, there's, of course, like I said, a lot of resources on why INFJs tend to skew towards being by themselves. I think the next question that will be good for INFJs to tackle is what can I do about this? How can I go about um, improving on this particular aspect of my life, on this particular skill set of my life? And I think 
that is really the one of the biggest cores of this aspect is that, you know, you have to understand and realize that human interaction is, is a necessity in order to be healthy. And I know it's probably easier said than done because you do have to get to a point where you're able to be confident in yourself enough to, to know that you're able to set healthier boundaries or that you're able to handle it if someone does unexpectedly disappoint you or hurt you. And there's all these other pieces that should probably be in play before you do this. But I think INFJs for the most part need to get themselves out there and you need to force yourself to literally socialize with people and force yourself to go to these groups and force yourself to start conversations. I don't, I'm not going to lie. I still, I'm not, I don't start conversations. Like, even though I go to these events and groups, a lot of times they'll talk to me, which is great because that, like, as soon as someone talks to me, I can go from there. But to start it, I get so much anxiety. <laughs> My head just goes crazy and it's harder. I'm, I can do it, but it's significantly harder for me. I get nervous, you know, if I'm in a particularly good mood, you know, maybe that is bad, but um, so I think one of the most important things that I have yet to see a lot of information on is what to do from here with the isolation. And I think it's so important to know what to do from here when it comes to the isolation for an INFJ. It's a great thing. I think I see it as a skill set. I love spending time by myself. It's my preferred and my natural state of being. Uh, but it has this other side to it where um, it's not, it can't work by itself and it shouldn't because that's not indicative of a healthy individual. And of course, you know, if you ever want to be in a committed relationship, these are skill sets. There are skill sets that you can only learn by interacting with other people and being around other people. You hit a glass ceiling. You, it's almost like you hit a glass ceiling if you're only hanging out with yourself when it comes to the socializing skill set. So I, as I would encourage all INFJs to force yourself to go out there and interact with people and socialize and understand that um, the key is that you, you want to make sure you're setting the appropriate boundaries and not going in thinking this person will be able to meet these expectations that you have. To be fair, INFJs have these expectations, not just of other people, but of themselves. And we are able to meet it because it's our natural way of being. So it's not truly, it's not really expectations that are truly super impossible, but they're just impossible for most people because they're not us. They're not predisposition with um, the same personality traits. So it's it becomes less realistic to go in uh, with that expectation um, or with that mindset. So it's okay to take your time building relationships. It's okay to um, be watchful of who you let in. Uh, but what you want to do and make sure that you do is that you're forcing yourself out there so that you are continuously improving on these very, very important aspects of your life and areas of your life, because that's really the only way. I think that pushing yourself to interact with other people is, I'm not going to lie, it's very painful and it's hard. It's super hard for me, um, at least. I've met people that I was hoping would become friends, but never do. That alone is painful, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's okay. It's like something that you have to do in order to be better and more well-rounded. And at the end of the day, the benefits end up outweighing the negatives, right? So 
that's just my two cents on where to go next from here. I'll definitely make more videos on this. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you not agree? Um, what's been your experience? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Go ahead and subscribe if this information was at all useful for you. Um, and go ahead and hit the like button if this information was at all useful for you uh, in order to help the YouTube algorithm as well. All right. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you soon. Bye.